Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm actually a little sick at the moment, but I can finally talk again. So I just thought I'd get a really quick video out about the Avalanche, uh, especially as black, how to play when white is playing like this. So we have three, four points and a high approach. And normally we attach under like this most of the time to take a nice big corner and even usually get Sente out of it like this. Okay, but what if white really, really wants the right side instead? It's actually a good skill for white to have to know and be comfortable with um, the ability to push along on this side, actually, and then Hane here. It seems like we are defying the Proverbs here uh, as white by, like, bumping our head on the Blackstone here. And also, now black can Hane uh, both heads, uh, both sides of our two stones, right? Um, but, you know, rules are meant to be broken, so actually this stuff is all valid. And uh, we're not going to talk too much about this one. And so this is actually a reason for white not to avalanche sometimes is if you're worried about this Hane. Because after this Hane, black has the Hane on both sides. And like just doing something like this is not going to be good enough. Because that Hane there is very powerful and this is going to be better for black. Uh, it would be fine for white if black extends. Which is the way that black used to play more in the past. And then Atari and something like this. Then white was... Definitely good enough. Um, yeah, so um, if black decides to Hane, white has no choice but to cut and then extend like this, and it gets complicated from here. So we're not going to get into too much about that in this video. Um, basically, just wait to study that maybe, uh, or wait until you've studied a bit of that before you play this avalanche. But um, Or you can just play around because uh, if you really want the right side, this is your only method here. And uh, if your your opponent probably doesn't know the avalanche that well either, depending on your level. So you guys can both just get into the chaos together. So you just need to know that after black Hanes, white needs to play like this. Often these two stones can turn into a sacrifice, but also you could end up capturing the black stones. It really depends on uh, how both players continue. So, um, you know, when we're fighting all over the board, like here, here, all these different places, we don't really have Joseki to follow most of the time. So when you guys are both in a game caught in this situation where, you know, if you're Q level, probably both of you don't know much about this. It's pretty much an equal fight anyway, just like any other, you know, chaos that happens on the board that's not in the corner. So there's no real reason actually to treat the corners so special, like, oh, we have to know the patterns in the corner to play anything. No because you don't know it in the center anyway. You're just randomly fighting there and you have to anyway, right? So um, so don't be afraid actually sometimes to just play things you don't know. But you know, if it's a serious game, then maybe you wanna study this move first before you play it. Now as black though, the, the move I'm gonna suggest is going down here. Um, first, a little bit of background is um, if you just connect, it's gonna be inferior. So you could play like this, but it's better for white. White now plays maybe here, maybe here, maybe Tanuki. Um, yeah, and uh, actually, descending, you have a cutting point, but it doesn't really do much. So for now, this move is just better than this one. Like now, if it went, um, if white extends here, then, you know, this area is still leaking underneath in case white tries to build this territory. And so um, I'm going to show some variations for that at the end, okay? The the main point of the video is going to come down to how to continue here as black. Um, now, what if white plays this block? This is a common online mistake I see a lot of people make. Um, so you Hane. If they defend, you can just defend, and it's super good for black. White is very, very bad. White has no points yet after five stones, and black has a lot of territory. So, um, but if white tries to cut... Um, even if all you did now is just fix your own cut in the corner first, because this white cut, like right now, this doesn't work. But if white cuts first and then you do something like this, then this cut is going to uh, work for white. Um, but let's keep it simple and, you know, not overwhelm you. So um, you should Hane because white's supposed to extend, actually. Um, and I'm going to simplify it for you. So if they cut, just fix yourself. And then if they fix this, you take that. If they fix this, you take this. And at this point, white is already destroyed. Um, there's no way to save both of these groups. Like if they play here, then just push and then something like this. If they, uh, you know, if they save this one, then you just eat these two stones. Very good for black. So 
as soon as white blocks, white's terrible. So here, here, then fix. Here, cut, then just fix yourself. They fix themselves, then you just cut. Or this one, then this one. So pretty simple, actually. Um, yeah, and um, if they play this first, okay, go along, go along. Do everything white tells you to do. And then what, right? If white fixes this, you still capture that. If white fixes this, you still cut here. And there's nothing white can do. Like, it's just... Um, White's just all captured on the right side. So it's good for black. You also have the option to Atari once like this to send white down to the second line and then take the two stones. Um, and that could potentially be even better. But bottom line is white absolutely cannot block this. That's way too hasty uh, because this Hane is way too good. So white needs to not think so much about territory and just think of the long term and uh, potential. So, it's, you know, this white position is not about points. It's just about having a big wall. Uh, so, um, okay, what else here? If they double Hane, you can just go ahead and take the stone. Something like this. Um, that's not, this double Hane is not really good these days. Although it used to be Joseki. Um, so like I said, connect is inferior, white just extends. If white goes down, then definitely you don't block. That's endgame anyway. You wouldn't block that anyway. Uh, you're gonna honey here. And then, like this, and then, now you don't even have a working cut to fix. So you don't even, uh, black can just play away now. Yeah. Uh, so white absolutely has to extend, and then black can jump. Um, and then... One of the traditional moves here is is this white move here. Now, if black tries to leak in later when there's a right side territory, uh, white can just block. Yeah, um, this move is possible too. Something more light like this is possible. Um, black can play like these kind of moves, but that does lose all, lose out on black's ability to um, play invasions in the future. So it's not actually necessarily bad for white. That's why white can actually choose even this kind of move. Um, okay, let's now finish off with the variations I'm going to suggest, which are AI friendly. Um, so you go down, and then white needs to extend. Now you have two options, A, or I'll say A and B. And to simplify, we're going to say that uh, B is going to be the Gote version for black, like a better local result, but Gote. And A is going to be Black's Sente result, and slightly more often uh, recommended by AI, according to my experience. Um, like definitely more than fifty percent. Uh, actually, it's it's much more than than B, but but B is good enough. B is usually getting a good enough score anyway. That like if you like it, you just do it. Um, it's it's really fine. Um, it comes down to your taste and your sense of the shape and everything. So I'm going to explain them, though, in a way that actually makes sense to help your memory, okay? Um, so the reason why Black pushes on the second line once before playing this uh, Knight's move, first of all, Black wants to get ahead, so Black doesn't want to just keep pushing from behind. So getting ahead means this move or this move. But in this case, um, with the shape as it is here, if you jump, then the push and cut is a problem. For example, like this, if Black wants to not lose uh, N17 to this kind of se sequence, then Black has to connect. But then in the corner, uh, there's going to be some problems. So um, like, for example, here, or White can set it up a different way. Yeah, there's different ways to do it. Like, um, for example, just block, for example, would be Sente. Black would need to um, fix the cuts in some way. Actually, yeah, no, that would work, yeah. Um, or like this. Um, so it's just a lot of uh, problems for Black here. Uh, so that's why Knights move. And so why the push then, right? Well... Um, we know why we don't go here, because black needs to have a stone here in this case to um, be safe against the push and cut stuff. Um, but if we just go here, then this blocking is going to be sente locally, because um, when white cuts, now this push becomes a problem for black. Um, so black can go down like this, but that's just already sad. Like, um, there's going to be a lot of squeezing happening on this side or white could even play this this one bad exchange first 
Um, it's bad because it uh, it makes black stronger, the stone. Um, it makes moves like this weaker because uh, because moves like this become weaker with no clamping or anything available after if if black uh, if white has made this bad exchange. So you don't normally play this bad exchange. Like I've done a class on this before um, in my Patreon stuff. Um, it's called Q style bad exchanges you might be making. It's it's kind of like when we have this Josaki. And then people push here, which is a super bad exchange. Um, they push here because they want to push here, but they should just push here directly. White's always going to play here anyway. Um, another example would be... <clears throat> Let's say we have this kind of shape and then 3-3 three, three, and then like this. Black pushes here. This is a terrible exchange. Um, this helps white a lot. It makes the uh, it actually makes the shape basically alive. Um, and then now black can't even attach here because there's all kinds of shape problems here like with wedge. Um, yeah, but if black just doesn't push here, then they can actually attach. White cannot wedge because of Atari and then Atari. So uh, this is a terribly bad exchange. So you, in general, you shouldn't do those. But um, the reason why white could do it here is because it makes this cut work. You see that? And so that is the reason. So you might be thinking, okay, but why don't we just fix, right? Yeah, but if you fix, then they got this one in Sente. And this one helps white get territory here. So you shouldn't, you should think ahead and don't let moves like that be Sente, right? Um, so that's why I push once. Um, now, even if white blocks, there's absolutely no sente at all. Um, yeah. So that's the reason why we push once on the second line and then play knight's move. Now, as for the sente version here, uh, which is A, it's going to be very simple. You're going to push twice to make four in a row like that, and then you're going to stop. And then you have sente to play elsewhere on the board. And this is the most commonly recommended AI variation, according to my um fairly extensive experience with it in many games um yeah and um once again i'll explain why exactly this many pushes um sometimes you can sort of just play one push but like you need to judge the value of white here and or here being sente and it makes it a bit complicated so in general if you don't want to think about it too much i recommend um the extra push here so you start with this position and then you push twice like this uh, and that's most of the time what ai tells me to do anyway um and so why right it's because now even if white gets both a and b well i guess we should say a and b because this turn looks the biggest um this turn i mean you wouldn't you wouldn't want this to be sente for white that's so great for the top side uh, and it isn't sente um and in fact even when white blocks here too still there's no problem with the cut at a um just barely right i would say it's a close call since it's a uh, you know one liberty off but isn't everything one liberty off so it's not really a close call it's calculated yeah so that is why you push exactly this many times it's you don't want a to be sente and you also don't even want b to be sente like you don't want you don't want b to be forcing you to play another move up here somewhere and you don't want a this one to be forcing you to play here or for this next follow-up move to become sente um so we don't need to connect this actually right that's the point so this is a finished corner that's fine totally fine it's only after they start playing additional moves a third move here that black starts needing to uh be careful Yeah, so we can block once, and then after that, we can uh, fix the shape, something like this. Or even like this, yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to give you guys. Um, the Avalanche is actually worth studying a little bit um, in the long run, because it gives White the ability to switch sides, and switching the side that you're developing between, like in this case, the top and the right, is a pretty important power. Uh, it makes a pretty big difference in the board development. Um, it's it's like you're you're losing half of your, you know, you're you're losing half of your uh, ability here. Like you have the ability to take the top because you know you have this basic Josaki down, 
but you're missing the entire other half of the coin, right? So other side of the coin. Yeah. So as white, you are going to need to know a little bit about this Hane, which is going to start with one, two, three, like this. And it's going to get into some fighting. Um, for example, black pushing here. And, uh, but as black, it's okay. Just descent. Um, sometimes AI would suggest the Hane, but it's not as often as you might expect. Like it's not as often as we would have played it back in the old days, um, which would have been Hane or extend with extend being the most common. And then, uh, by the way, this is like the small avalanche and, uh, this one, when black extends and white stubbornly pushes again, uh, and then black Hanes, then it becomes the large avalanche. And again, a white has no choice but to Atari and play like this. Uh, so, you know, just uh, if white plays like this, you can just go down and then you just choose like one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, and then Tanuki.